Hello to all our Waterbury Symphony family, friends, and followers, and welcome to anyone who may just be classically curious and is checking in with the symphony to see what we're all about and maybe what we have going on. My name is Ed Allman. I'm a bass player with the symphony, have been for a number of years, and this pile of lumber currently holding me up is the double bass. The double bass is, as you can tell, a member of the string family. It's got four strings, just like violin, viola, and cello. Uh, but even though it is sometimes called the bass violin or the bull fiddle, it actually is not related to those other members of the string family. It's sort of a sideways cousin that has more in common with the modern guitar than with violin. In fact, the predecessor instrument of the modern bass had five or six strings and was fretted. So we're a little different, but we let them play with us anyway, and we play in very much the same manner. We can either pluck the strings, which is a sound you very often hear in jazz or to make very punchy accents in a piece of music, or we use a bow, just like the other string instruments. It's maybe a little hard to tell in the video, but the bass bow is quite a bit shorter and quite a bit heavier than the bows the other strings use because our strings are also substantially thicker. We are the, uh, the biggest and the deepest playing member of the string family, so the result is a very large body and very thick strings, so you need a little bit more pressure, a little more power. The funny thing is, for all the size of this instrument, it is actually the softest instrument in the orchestra. The body is not big enough to make the same volume of sound that a violin or a cello makes. So, the bow just goes on the string, makes the string vibrate, the sound goes through the bridge, into the top, and this big wooden box acts like an amplifier and sends the sound back out. If you're really paying attention while we're crammed against the wall over on the right-hand side of the stage, you may see that bass players use two different grips on their bow. There's the overhand grip, which is what I use, which is very much like violin and cello. There's also an underhand grip. That's actually the older style of bass bow. The original bass bows and actually a number of old school string instruments use this underhand grip. So it's not just we're disagreeing about how to hold it, it's actually a different bow. Different shape here. In either case, the hair is very, very coarse. If you have a cat at home and you've ever been licked by the cat and you know how, how rough their tongue is, that's very much what the hair on a, a string instrument bow is like. If it weren't, it would just slide. But the tooth, the roughness of the string, grabs the string and makes it vibrate. Because the bass is so large and the sounds are so low, it's very often treated as, as kind of a comical instrument. Um, if you're playing along with a Beethoven symphony, for example, you're projecting a lot of power. You're holding up the bottom end of the orchestra. But when we finally step forward to the front of the stage, so to speak, it's very often treated as a special effect. For example, in Camille Sanson's Carnival of the Animals, he gives the portrayal of the elephant to the double basses, and he writes it in this very kind of slow, lumpy waltz. He even marks it allegretto pomposo, a little fast, but very pompous and heavy. So I will be back in a minute to play that for you, and I want you to try to imagine a whole line of circus elephants in ball gowns dancing a waltz. Thanks, Ed. And hello, everyone. I'm Leif, and I'm here today to read you a poem about a really cool animal. The elephant. The elephant has a nose that's gigantic, and it's called a trunk. Also, check out these ears. They're really huge. The elephant is probably the biggest animal to walk the earth, uh, at least in our time. And it's also super smart. An elephant's brain is gigantic and it has a really good memory. If you meet an elephant tomorrow and then come and visit him again in 20 years, he'll remember you. So elephants are really awesome animals. And that leads me to tell you a secret. You can tell what an instrument is going to sound like, a musical instrument, just by looking at it. The smaller it is, the higher the pitch. The bigger it is, like Ed's bass that you just saw and heard, the lower the pitch. So you see, it's perfect that Camille Sassons, the composer, chose the string bass to portray an elephant. <laughs> 
because they're both really big. Now, the uh, poet Jack Pralutsky, whose poem I'm about to read, uh, uses lots of imagery about the elephant, including one word that I particularly want to point out, and that is the word ponderous, slow and clumsy because of great weight. A perfect word to describe an elephant. So, here goes the poem. An elephant never forgets to remember the things he remembers never to forget. An elephant knows that it snows in December, but summer is warmer and water is wet. An elephant's ears are a genuine wonder. An elephant's trunk is an elephant's pride. His footfalls often are mistaken for thunder. If you're in the neighborhood, do step aside. When elephants gather, the ground starts to tremble beneath the great weight of their ponderous feet. Be glad there are elephants left to assemble. Without them, our planet would feel incomplete. Take it away, Ed. <laughs> 